These days, all the talk seems to be about AI and how AI makes selecting objects in an image easy. However, as I demonstrated in an earlier video, the accuracy of the AI selection tools isn't what you might expect. It doesn't matter what editing software you're using, they all seem to have the same fundamental limitation. They only deal with the initial stage of the selection process. But there's another important problem as well with AI tools. Not everyone can use them, as this machine learning system requirement document on the Affinity website explains. So in this video, I'll show you an easy, old school technique anyone can use to produce super accurate selections. And to prove how easy this is, you can download the demo image that I'll be using from my website so you can try it for yourself. You'll find the link to the image in the YouTube video description, but don't download it yet. Watch the video first, then download the image to practice yourself. Our goal is to make an accurate selection of the cactus on the right of the frame. Before I explain the old school technique you can use for this, let's look at the results from the new AI object selection tool in Affinity Photo. This seems to struggle to select the entire cactus with a single click, but we can click a few times to add the different parts of the cactus. The selection though isn't very accurate and we still need to refine and improve it. In other words, the AI selection tool makes a rough initial selection and the result you get is only as good as your subsequent refinement. So let's compare this with an old school method using the quick mask. The first thing to do is click the quick mask icon. We then see a red mask covering the image. This shows us what is and isn't being selected. Anything covered by the red mask isn't selected, which is currently the entire image. To make our initial selection on the quick mask, we'll use the brush tool in the tools palette. For this example, we'll set this to 100% opacity and flow, and we'll give it a hardness of somewhere between 80 and 100%. Then, using white, we paint over the areas that we want to select. As you paint, you'll see the red mask vanish. What we want to select is the cactus and its spines. Don't worry that you're including a lot of blue sky in this, because we'll get rid of that in a moment. After painting around the cactus, click the quick mask icon again in the toolbar. This turns off the quick mask converting it into a selection, and we now see the marching ants. We've just done the same step as the AI object selection tool, and we now have the same problem. We still need to improve the selection accuracy. This selection includes a lot of blue sky around the edge of the cactus that we don't want. We'll now remove it though, using the flood select tool. Click on the tool in the tools palette. We then see the different modes in the toolbar. These control how the tool affects the current existing selection. As we want to remove the blue sky from this, we'll set the mode to subtract. The other important setting that you need to use is the contiguous option, which we want to turn off. This is what will remove the sky that we can see between the cactus spines. Then all we need to do is click on the blue sky inside the selection. This then produces a great selection of the cactus, even around the spines. The only problem is that there are some blue areas inside the cactus and those have also been removed. But don't worry, this is very easy to fix. We just go back into the quick mask mode. We can then zoom in and paint over the areas using the white paintbrush again to remove them. When we're done, just click on the quick mask button to return to the regular mode. If you spot any other areas of blue around the cactus, Use the tool again to remove these. Now despite this using only very basic tools, with a little care and thought, you can produce amazingly accurate selections very quickly. But there's an even easier method using the refine option. Let's go back to our initial selection to look at an example of how this works. This time, rather than removing the blue sky with the flood select tool, we'll use the refine edges command in the select menu. You can also access this feature when any of the selection tools are active. 
you'll see that there's a refine button in the toolbar at the top of the interface. When we click the refine button or we use the command in the menu, it opens the refine dialog. We now see the red overlay again, indicating what is and isn't being selected. We also see the refine dialog, which has several controls and tools. These settings act on the selection to improve it. But the real power in this dialog is these brush tools. We can use these to remove the unwanted blue around the cactus. All we need to do is paint over the edge that we want to refine. To show you how easy this can be, we'll use just the matte brush. When we use it to paint over the edges, Affinity Photo will reanalyze them and refine them. To make this really easy though, we'll use a very large matte brush. Then we'll paint over the edge of the selection to be refined. As you can see, the results are fast and very, very impressive. If anything is missed, just paint over the area again. Then when you're happy, click the apply button to apply the changes to the selection. When you've done this, it's also a good idea to save the selection as a spare channel. It makes it easy to return to in the future if you need to because you've made a mistake. Just click the select menu and use the save selection option. And if you want to know in detail how to use all the refined controls, I cover them in my book, How to Select It. I'll link to that in the video description. But as powerful as the refine tool is, it isn't perfect. So let's check at how it performed with this image. To do that, we'll need to add a mask to our layer by clicking the mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel. We can then clear the selection using the select menu and deselect option. This has created a mask from our selection that hides the unwanted background. And it seems to have made a pretty good job of selecting the cactus, but let's check more closely. Right click on the mask thumbnail in the Layer Studio panel, and you can then select the edit mask option. This displays the black and white mask rather than the image and also allows us to edit it. If we zoom in, you can see that the mask has some fantastic detail, but also it isn't perfect. You can see some black in the white areas of the mask. This means these pixels are being hidden by the mask, which we don't want. What we need is a way to turn these areas of the mask white without damaging the edge of the mask. And that's where this next old school technique comes in. This technique uses the regular brush tool yet again and involves painting on the mask using white. The problem is, if we try to paint over these areas, it could take hours and we risk damaging the edge of the mask. The solution though is to change the blend mode of the brush. You'll find this in the toolbar at the top of the interface when the brush is selected. The default blend mode is normal, but we will change it to overlay. Now when we move the brush over the white mask and paint, we can see it removing the black areas without affecting the rest of the mask. Although this seems easy, you do need to be careful though it's very powerful. If there are any fine details that you want to preserve around the edge of the mask, this technique could remove them. It does need some practice, but it can be a superb way to remove unwanted halos around edges. Just don't forget to set your brush blend mode back to normal when you've finished. Now it's your turn. Use the link in the video description to download the sample image and follow the video. If you want to learn more about how the Refine tool works, see my book, How to Select It. But you can also watch this video next, which explains some of its features. Thanks for watching today, and I hope you found the video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you soon for another video.